Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Sonic 2. I am, as always, your host, Awesome Sauce. And uh, today we'll be taking on the Oil of Ocean. Uh, and I would say that Oil Ocean Zone is probably where you see the difficulty of Sonic 2 start to really spike. Um, it's not a super hard level, but I mean it's difficult enough that you notice that it's that it is more difficult than your previous, you know, than your previous ones. Um, the boss is a little bit trickier. I wouldn't call it hard, but the boss is tricky. Um, there's a lot more spikes, a lot more things that can hurt you just, you know, lying around. And, uh, I don't know. I would just say it's definitely a noticeable change from Mystic Cave. Because I don't really think Mystic Cave was very hard. Um, once you get used to it, it's, it's actually a fairly easy level to take on. Um, but the bad guys, uh, that one, one thing about, see, like that, you'll walk right, you'll just be walking and walk right into a cannon blast from a friggin' seahorse. Uh, the bad guys are a lot more unpredictable in Oil Ocean. Um, just one example being those little seahorses. Um, those guys will just, you know, you'll walk into the screen and suddenly you'll be getting a face full of... Uh, seahorse pellets, which is not my favorite thing in the world. Sorry if I'm getting a little bit of lag here. My computer is not really handling this whole thing very well. And my USB mic is still messed up. I haven't been able to take it to the shop yet. But, alas, I will. I will get it fixed. Because it takes up a hell of a lot of system resources in the one I'm using right now. This one's also a USB mic, and it's a high-quality microphone, but I have to run a separate program to get it to work in Mac. How stupid is that? Anyway. Oh, shit. That was just a few rings, no big deal. Whoop. Oh, God. I don't like those guys. Anyway, I would say yes, this is very much more difficult. So anyway, God. Um... Sonic 3. I would really love to bro-fist that one. Uh, so I think we may just do Sonic 3 and Knuckles together as a bro-fist. Sort of complete the collection on uh, our YouTube channel. On our LP endeavors. Yeah, that's another thing. You have to jump on these platforms, but they're surrounded by freaking spikes. You're just gonna be careful about that and make sure you know where you're... Gosh, damn it! See? It's just not fair. You suddenly walk in and you get a face full of seahorse pellet. Another thing about the seahorses is they're very unpredictable badniks. Um, they don't... It's not just the way they shoot. See, look at that. It, I can't jump up, therefore I can't hit him. And it puts me right in his way. So that I will get hit, no matter what. And it has me floating there, a freaking sitting duck. But uh, those seahorses, they have irregular flight patterns. They just follow you, and they sort of float up and down at the same time. So it makes them infinitely more douchey than your average, you know, like, buzz bomber or something. Oh, that was my fault. That's dumb. That was dumb of me. Gosh, damn it. What the hell? What just hit me? I just killed all of them. Gosh, damn it. All right. It's okay. It's all right. I'm all right. Jeez, what's wrong with me today, guys? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but... Something better change. Or I'm not gonna do so well. Oh, God! Jeez. I am just sucking it up today. And right, I'm sorry. And of course, we finished the first act. Oh, man. Sometimes I can get Sonic to stay in the screen for this part, but it doesn't always work. Plus, you gotta wait for Tails to come along. Little crazy kid that he is. So far, I haven't seen him die yet. I don't know. He's gotten pounced, but he hasn't actually officially, you know, died. By the traditional definition. He's basically invincible. Which is kind of a cool power, but then again, he gets left behind all the time, and he runs like a Riri. So, trade-offs, you know? Trade-offs. I have no idea what that is. Yes, I do. Yes, I do! There we go. Now we got it. Bitchin'. Okay, uh, watch out for these little things. This is a giant spike D. I'm getting so much lag today. 
It's really irritating. And this one's just a, uh, I guess a push. It's a push, uh, push bouncer, so you just gotta keep, you gotta go in the direction that it pushes you. It's kind of a pain in the ass. There's two of those things here. To me, they look like those goat's heads that you get when you're out camping. You bastard! See, ugh, okay. This is cheap. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. All right, um. Oof. So, anybody hear about the, um, I know this is completely off topic of the game, but there's not a whole lot to tell about Oil Ocean. It's difficult, and it's a pain in the ass, and you don't want to jump on those spikes and be careful of that. But, uh, oh God. Wow, awesome. And I'm telling you how to play the game, apparently. Um, completely off topic, but did anybody hear about the Superman reboot? And I'm not talking about the Superman film reboot. I'm talking about the Superman, uh, the DC reboot of all the DC comics. We're talking going back to number one on everything, right? So at first I'm excited. Because they're going back to number one, I don't have to, you know, have a massive amount of continuity to sift through in order to understand things. Great, awesome. Uh, but then I look at it, and first of all, they've taken away Superman's underwear. As many people know, I'm a giant Superman fan, although the games have been suckage, and I do believe that Superman does hold the worst game ever, which is called Superman 64. It is awful, worthless, and you should never play it unless you want to die. But uh, yeah, they're rebooting all the characters, and they took away his underwear on the outside of his pants, which I know is a small thing to be a you know a little bitching about, but I don't know. It irritates the shit out of me, nonetheless. Okay, basic idea is try to wail on him there, and then make sure you get out of the way of that thing. And then when the laser comes up, just stay down here. And jump up and down a bunch of times. The laser will try to get you. If you keep jumping, he'll do that thing, and he won't be able to shoot you from underneath. You cannot, can not jump and kill the laser or the spiky. So just make sure you always go after Robotnik because those other two things will hurt you if you try to jump on them. All right, and there's the end of Oil Ocean. The boss is pretty easy if you know how to beat it. Um, there's a strategy to it, but you know, you just gotta know how to beat it. So anyway, I know that's a small thing to bitch about, but you know, the costume is kind of iconic. If you mess with it, it's a little irritating to me. Okay, Metropolis Zone. Now I said the difficulty spiked in Oil Ocean. It's nothing compared to Metropolis Zone. Metropolis Zone will rape your face and then laugh at you. You can die in everything. Everything makes you die. Uh, and it also has three acts, so it seems like it takes about an hour to finish. Um, this episode may be a little bit longer than the other ones because I am gonna try and finish Metropolis Zone in this, um, in this episode. Oh, of course. By the way, the steam things there hurt you. And there's crab meat, an updated version from Sonic 1. Uh, they have smashers. Oh, God! <laughs> I thought I had timed that right. I guess not. Oh, God. So anyway, they're updating... Oh, jeez. They're updating Superman and everybody. But the funny thing is, is that the main comics get a continuity update, like a, you know, a complete, you know, reset. But the, um, like the side comics don't. Like Batman Incorporated and all that weird crap that I don't read. I only read Superman at the moment, but I think I'm going to start reading Justice League and Batman and Superman when they come out. Because I would like to follow the new continuities. I think that would be fun. I think it would be interesting. Um, but I do follow Superman right now. And I really don't think he needs an update like that, you know? What the hell? Just give me the freaking floor. Tails will get in your way in this in this place. Um, if you're not careful, he'll make that floor, you know. Um, but those little uh, starfish, you gotta watch out for them. They spit their little spikes at you if you get too close. If you move fast enough, you'd be able to avoid them. Unlike me. All right, um, we got this, we got this. There we go. Those guys shoot their uh, shoot their arms at you. Their little spiky bastard arms. Oh shit! Those things you gotta watch out for. You gotta time the jumps right, etc., etc. Um, the spiky blocks, and they come out in a counterclockwise fashion. No biggie. 
Uh, even though I just, you know, got hit by them. Ah! So anyway, Superman uh, is the main one that I'm worried about because of the costume change. I know that's a... Fuck! I went the wrong direction. <sighs> okay. You gotta be really... You gotta have good reflexes in this level. And try not to get hit by that shit. Oh, gosh! Damn it! Sometimes you'll get lucky and the level will glitch out, and those, um... Those spikies will not rape your face. Which is kind of cool. Bam! Alright, so... I know it's a stupid thing to bitch about, but... Um... You know, I'm, I'm a Superman fan. I want him to be... Superman. I don't want him to be some imitation of Superman. Plus, they gave him all these little wonky-looking collars. I don't know. It freaks me out a little. But anyway, I would like to follow, you know, Superman, Batman, and Justice League. The main ones. Because I feel like I've never been able to get into Justice League because of the continuity shit. And, um, when you're going up those, those screw things, the best thing for you to do is to wait. Like, go slow and wait until you're at a point where you can sit and avoid them. And I think I'll be able to show you on this part. Um, Tails, stop it, you little douchebag. Alright, so... Just try to go slow. I know that's like a foreign thing for a lot of Sonic fans. It is for me. And don't smash yourself on the ceiling like I did. Okay. But, um, I'm excited about the continuity reboot, but at the same time, I'm not. You know? There's some minor changes that I would not have wanted to see and would not have implemented myself. But, I am not the creator of Superman. I'm not the writer. Well, I wish I could be. You get this guy from behind, yeah, before he can even get us. So, you know, it's not up to me, but, you know. Okay, I was supposed to go the other direction, I guess? I don't know. Okay, taking me back over here. And this is what I mean about worthless, you know, worthless uh, invincibility spawning. Okay, that was that was helpful. Okay, this is what I mean. <sighs> I think I came out of nowhere. Okay, so minor changes to the Superman franchise. I just the main thing is I hope they don't change his sort of outlook because Superman is supposed to be a certain thing. You know, he's supposed to be about truth and justice and and you know in a way the American way, which is you know anybody can be anything they want. Uh, idealistically. And that's what Superman is. He's an ideal. And that's fine. You know? Don't try to make him darker. He's not Batman. Okay? You know, that's what I say. Superman is not Batman. Um, the only thing that I could say that Superman could take a page out of Batman's book is in the video games. Because Superman's video games have sucked across the board. And there, there is not a good Superman game that I would want to play or would buy on purpose. All right, that's a pain in the ass. But hey, they didn't come to me. It's good. Bam! Yeah! All right, oh God! Whoa, that was irritating. Okay, this is a maze-like part. You could just keep going down forever if you if you wanted to. It's stupid, but there you go. First, first act of, God, the three-act behemoth that is Metropolis Zone. Um, all that said, I'm a huge, huge fan of the original Superman movies, uh, with Christopher Reeve. Um, I feel like he is, you know, the ideal Superman. I really like Superman Returns. In fact, I plan on doing a little, um, a little audio thing, I guess. I don't know. Sort of like a, an audio review of the Superman games and how they've evolved. Shittily. Uh, sort of a little funny audio review, or uh, some kind of prescription for Superman to actually make a good game, because they just haven't. And it's disappointing. Ugh! These guys are shooting earlier, it's not fair. They came too soon. Sorry. Alright, so... Anyway, other than that, I really think, uh... I'm really excited about Christopher Nolan's treatment of Superman. Um, the guy who they've got playing the new Superman actually looks a lot like Superman and a lot like Christopher Reeve to me, which is important. Uh, one thing I'm worried about is that they're not going to use the original theme, which is a little bit worrisome. But if they don't, I mean, you know, they better make something just as good. That's what I say. Son of a bitch! 
Every time. I always forget to turn off the damn screensaver. Sorry about that, guys. Whoop. All right. So anyway. Um. Anyways. I have nothing to say. <sighs> this is just such a hard level. I have to stop talking for a minute just because it's it's difficult and it's a pain in the ass. See, just like I told you, random, worthless invincibility box spawning. What does this fucking do for me? You know? It puts me in a place where there's no bad guys, okay? Not a single bad guy to be found until there, and I could just run past them in the first place. Oh god, we're gonna do it the hard way, we're gonna jump up that way. Yeah! Alright. I mean, I guess it helped me there in that I was rash and I, you know, uh, ran right into the lava, that was helpful, but if I had not had the invincibility cheat, uh, the invincibility box, would I have been, um, so careful? Probably not. Uh, probably. I, I would have been so, um, rash, I guess. I would have been less care- I would have been more careful had I not had that, and it wouldn't help me anyway. Because they don't put it in a place where there's a ton of bad guys for you to defeat, they just put it- ah, tails. There you go, you little dork. Okay, here we go, and alley -oop. Also, um, I had a chili dog today. The first time in a long time. It was delicious. Also, I've been thinking about Rune Fantasy Frontier, and I want to do a legit LP of it, but at the same time, there's a lot of that Harvest Moon grinding that, that is inherent in the games. You bastard. Um, Lagosaurus Rex, man. Uh, so I'm thinking about making it an update thing again. Um, you know, just a... Just a thought. Because, yeah, again, it's just got that, you know, same Harvest Moon formula of having a lot of, you know, just grind-like activities. A little one-up down there for those of you wanting to collect some items. Just jump on here. Jump on there. Jump on there. Maybe be really careful about those things, man. And again, Metropolis Zone, I think the reason its difficulty spikes so much is because it requires you to slow down and think about what you're doing. Uh, whereas a lot of the Sonic levels in Sonic 2 just don't. I mean, they do to a point, but there's a lot of speed, and um, I think it's more fun because it goes a little faster. Whoa, that was close. Woo! All right, doing a little better now. But, you know, you're not expecting, especially as a little kid in the 90s. You know, we all had awful attention spans. Um, when you're playing Sonic the Hedgehog and it's going so fast, you're not expecting to have to, you know, increase your level of cognition or your um, your level of, of recognition of the environment, right? You're not ex you're not expecting to have to pay attention so much in this game. And then when you get to Metropolis Zone and you have to, it it's really jarring because it the difficulty just spikes so much because you have to pay attention. Like, you can go fast, but only if you've got the thing memorized or you've got, like, really quick reflexes. Which is fun. I mean, I think it's still fun. This harkens more back to... God! Whoa! Made a mistake right off the bat. Lose all my rings. Awesome. It's just what I love to do. Alright, um... We're just gonna go down on here. These are just giant wheel rotating platforms. Nothing real special about them. And they just get you to the other side. All right. Yo. I love these things, though. I always thought those were really fun and cool. If you run fast enough, like if you're on an incline like that, you can get past. Uh... Oh, God. All right, all right. This is one of those smashy things. Pistons, I suppose you would call them. Designed by Dr. Robotnik to make you think, ah, ha, 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 you're gonna make it through. Another thing is, after you get past these two pistons, you come over here, and there is a praying mantis. If you jump up too soon, he'll hit you in the face with his blades. So you gotta be careful about that, and just pay attention. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of Scrap Brain Zone, um, which is one of the hardest levels in Sonic 1. Uh, every level in Sonic 1, I think, was one of the hardest levels, but I'm a giant wimp. So, there's that. You know, a bad thing about Sonic 2, you can't jump into Tails' hands and fly. That's not a bad thing, I guess, because they hadn't really thought up the AI for it. The AI hadn't been, you know, increased enough. 
But, um, yeah, in Sonic 3, uh, you can do that. Shit. What happened? All right, um, in Sonic 3, you could do that if you took, like, I would take control of both controllers just for fun. I would, I would plug in both controllers and, and put myself on both of them to try and get, what the hell, Tails? Why are you on the outside of that thing? But I would, just for fun, you know, take control of both so I could get Tails to uh, help us fly around. He does it automatically in Marble Zone, or sorry, um, Marble Garden. I think it's Marble Garden, pretty sure. Oh, you son of a bitch! That's, oh, see, that's the kind of whorish, stupid shit that's in Sonic 2 Metropolis Zone. They give you a jump that puts you right in front of, you know, a crab meat or some shit like that. And just for ease here, we're gonna just jump up the hard and slow way. <laughs> see, stuff like that, they put you right up into that. So you have to either react really quick or die. Basically, we're gonna go back down there and get that ring box. You see that? It was totally on purpose. That wasn't. Bullshit! Whoa, damn, see that kind of stupid shit. They put you right in the path of some idiot. Ugh, so unfair. There we go. All right, down the pathway. That gives you a little speed boost too. You can take off right off the bat, it's kind of neat. And it gets you past those uh, starfish faster than you normally would. Keep your head down on these, or Tails can, you know, just trigger them anyway, because he's a little douche. I would not suggest playing Sonic 2 with Tails if you want it to be, you know, easy. Tails does make it harder for you, because... Damn you! Tails... What? Bullshit! I... Come on, you guys saw, right? I was totally curled up, and I hit him. Okay. Tails triggers bad guys, and... You know, gets hit in a special stage randomly because he wants to lose your rings because he's too slow. And he'll trigger off those starfish and just basically be a general nuisance. But generally, like, generally speaking, if you're fast enough, you don't... Ah! Great. Awesome. We're going to have to go back and respawn these things. You got to go back far enough to make them respawn themselves. There you go. And they'll be back at the bottom again. Easy enough if you screw up like I do all the time. Oh yeah, another thing is Metropolis Zone's boss is like ten times harder than any boss in the in the rest of the game. I mean, even... Well, I mean, that doesn't include the final boss. I'll, I'll recant my statement there. Um, like... I can't remember how difficult, because this is usually where I stop playing, because I get frustrated. Um, but in Sonic 2, it's harder than any boss you've played before, at least, in, in Sonic 2. Any other boss that came before, way easy compared to the Metropolis Zone boss. And we're about to come up on him. Whew, yeah, and then there's, oh jeez. He's got like these spinny things you have to avoid hitting somehow. And I don't have any rings. And of course, he's got his little. Damn it! See? It's hard. You have to be really careful about when you jump on him. Whereas, in most of the other levels, the boss, you would just have to sort of wail on him until you got it. Um, but Sky Fortress. Um, Sky Fortress, I can't speak for because I can't remember what the boss is like on that level. I may never have gotten that far. I think I have, but again, usually I get frustrated at this point and, and, and stop playing. There we go. You bitch. And of course I lose all my damn rings. See, what the hell is that? Like, how am I supposed to do that? Okay. See, I've done this before, but it's just, it's a pain in the ass every time. Okay, I can't lose all my lives here because I'm gonna need some for Fortress, for Sky Fortress. 
Sky Chase Zone is pretty fun too. Got one ring. I think the main idea is just not to try hitting him at this point. And then wait for him to go up. Oh god! And then wait for him to do that so he gives you a chance to kill his little shields. So, try to jump over him, yeah. And then he'll do his big spinny, and you can avoid him by getting in the corner. I haven't played this boss in so long. You avoid him by getting in the corner, and then wait for him to make horizontal motions with his attack. And then, you know, just do the whole jump over him thing again. Pretty simple. Unless you're an idiot like me. But if you do get hit, make use of it. Right? Make good use of it, for sure. Another good thing about the old bosses like this, uh, yeah, they they had pretty standard had pretty standard uh, attack patterns, which was nice. You could predict them, and they didn't usually get harder. Uh, like at the end of the battle, when you're about to beat them, they don't have like a second mode that gets more difficult. Except for uh, the last boss, of course, the final um, final fight with Robotnik. And here, like, you can probably avoid it, but again, maybe not the best thing to try. Unless you've got really good reflexes. You can just... Oh, he does have a second mode. I was wrong. He has a laser. But, you know, you can pretty much just kill his ass after that, if you've been hitting him enough. So. There we go. Bam. Bam. That is the end of Metropolis Zone, the one I always have the most trouble with. Uh, but it only gets harder from here, guys, so... Whew, stay tuned for the next episode when we move to Sky Chase. Take out Robotnik's Flying Fortress. I will see you guys next time.